We're going to be talking about uh, mass and weight today, primarily weight. That's the issue today. What is weight? And what I'm going to be doing here is starting out with a comment that someone made, okay, uh, related to my previous um, presentation, my previous lecture. She says the following. The, pro the quotes from Aristotle you present clearly are talking about densities. It takes more force to push an object through water than it does through air, and less force if the air is thinner. If these quotes, uh, he also says that it takes, it, in these quotes, he also says that it takes more force to move a heavier object, which we know is also true. Gravity is different, from, of course, because the force of gravity is proportional to the weight. These quotes don't mention gravity or falling at all. So this claim about uh, iron balls falling seems to be entirely a straw man created by someone ex with extraordinarily poor reading comprehension. Or maybe you simply presented the wrong quotes. I don't know much about Aristotle's writings. Well, the, the issue is, uh, yeah, maybe I didn't make that clear. Uh, I was not talking really about gravity. I was talking about force, and I was talking really about Aristotle's uh, reasoning. His reasoning was that um, you have some resistance to flow. If you move through water, you move a little harder than if you move through air, that sort of, sort of thing. And he applied that to gravity. I didn't quote the gravity passages from his book. What I was saying, what I was referring to was what was his reasoning process, okay, why he concluded that, uh, you know, a, a heavier object uh, falls faster than a, a slower one because he carried out this type of reasoning. He was looking at what resistance uh, that object encounters. Okay, so that was the, the context. I just want to clarify that if that wasn't clear the first time. Okay, let's move on here. Here I'm going to begin with a review of mathematical physics, okay, of um, how they look at weight specifically. Okay, and I'm going to start with force, which is what I ended up with last time. And here you have it. Uh, um, I, I was talking about force equals mass times acceleration, which is Newton's second law of motion. And I'm saying that's a push uh, force. That's a force of push, primarily, because you're talking about where the object departs to where it ends. And what do we mean by that? Well, it's being pushed. Now, you can say, well, maybe it's being pulled from the front, but they never justified that, because there is no pull from the front, except like if you're pulling on a donkey with a, with a rope. And in that case, it's still a push, because what's really pushing is the rope on the back of the donkey's neck. So it's still a push force, okay? So uh, I'm saying that force equals mass times acceleration is a force of push exclusively. And on the other hand, the uh, Newton's gravitational law, okay, which is that second one there, force equals gravitational constant G, mass one times mass two divided by distance squared. I'm saying that's a pull force, okay? And uh, I don't know if they ever discovered that. They don't, they don't talk about in terms of push and pull. They just say, well, this one's the gravitational law and that one's the second law of motion. That's all they say, okay? And they apply it. Okay, what is mass according to the standard, you know, the uh, worldly wisdom? Quantity of matter. And that's essentially how mathematical physics treats it. It says quantity of matter, that's it. Okay, that's the notion. Uh, what is weight? Summarizing pull or push of gravity. Could be push, right? It could be push from above. But they always talk about the pull of gravity. Keep that in mind, okay? Weight, uh, then, is, I guess you could say, a push under the uh, quantum mechanics notion because you're, you have all these particles that are allegedly pushing the object downward towards the Earth. If you're going to do it particles, I'm not sure how you can pull with, by throwing particles from the center of the Earth to you, right? And that's one issue. The other one is when you have uh, general relativity, what you have is warpage of space-time. Well, somehow that, uh, what you're doing is, like in the case of a planet, Earth or the Sun, it's pushing the canvas downwards. That's the notion they have. And then the whatever object could be a photon, could be an electron, could be an atom, is rolling down that inclined plane. That's the notion they have. Okay, so it is a push, no matter what. Okay, uh, uh, the question is why would the photon or the electron or whatever you want to throw into that hole? Why would it roll downwards? What's pulling it down there, or is something pushing that downwards? And that's for you to figure out. But my point is that the original warpage of space is created through a push mechanism. That's the point. Okay, so what do they say? Well, they say, well, if you have the same mass, okay, uh, you weigh differently in different parts of the universe. Like if, if your mass here on Earth is 100 kilograms, you would weigh only 16.5 kilograms on the moon. Okay? And they really have no explanation for that. Uh, what they use is mathematical description. They say, it is so. <laughs> You, go, you weigh here 100 kilograms, you go to the moon, you weigh a little less, right? And uh, you can prove it with uh, astronauts going out there. 
Great. What have we learned? We have a description, but we don't have a mechanism. Are they being pulled towards the center of the earth? Are, are they being pulled to the center of the moon? Or are they being pushed by, I don't know, particles coming from outer space? What's the mechanism? Okay. And we do have a mechanism, on, uh, a mechanism under the rope model. And here it is. Okay. Okay. Here you have it. If you have uh, a bigger object, such as in this case, the earth, okay, as you can see, it's a little bigger than the moon. Okay? And so there, there's a lot more ropes connecting every atom on Earth to one atom of the astronaut. It's tied to that foot of his, in this case, in this example. And there are a lot fewer atoms on the moon, and they're pulling on that same atom, but there are, since there are fewer atoms, you have uh, fewer ropes. In fact, fewer um, uh, independent ropes, that's what we call them, because they have to be pulling, in, or really it's a tension, but we'll call, use the word pull for the sake of argument. What I'm saying is that you have fewer ropes acting, okay, in the case of the moon, because there are fewer atoms on the moon that comprise the moon than the Earth. Very simple, straightforward kindergarten stuff, okay? You don't need to know any more than that. Uh, so, so we have a solution for, for why that's the case, why you're being uh, pulled more towards the center of the Earth than you are being pulled towards the, uh, the center of the moon. Okay, so uh, you might say, well, well, what's pulling? I mean, you know, uh, how do you know there are ropes that are pulling on each atom of your body? Okay, so now we introduce a little evidence, okay? People like evidence, they want proof, okay? So let's introduce some of that. We don't go for proof and evidence in, in rational science, but a lot of people say, prove it to me, Bill. Okay, let's prove it. <laughs> let's move in there. Let's go with that. Here's Mr. Uh, Richard Moeller. He's a professor at Berkeley. Uh, I think he still is. Uh, I don't think he retired yet. And he says, for example, if you have the Earth, there's a big mass here, referring to the Earth, right? And you have you with your little mass here. That's you there, a little uh, drawing of a human on top of the Earth, the big mass and the little mass, okay? Every atom on the Earth is pulling on every atom of you. Let me repeat that. Every atom on, earth, on the Earth is pulling on every atom of you. Richard Muller, not me, okay? That's what he says you're also pulling on it, okay? The amazing thing about gravity is that it goes right through things, okay? So how do you pull on every atom on Earth, and how do you get gravity to go right through things, right through walls? You know, you have, a, you have an astronaut, he's in outer space, and he wants to uh, create this gravity shield. He wants to protect himself from gravity so gravity doesn't touch him. So he puts a shield in front of him, and it turns out that the Earth attracts the shield and attracts him right through the shield, both of them, and the moon and whatever's behind them. How do you do that? Unless every atom in your body is connected to every atom on Earth. That's what Mr. Muller is saying. Okay, that's the theory. So we have uh, a way of showing that, and essentially, you know, that Newton's uh, gravitational law is uh, sound. It's consistent with the rope model. No problem there. Okay. Now, how about uh, the establishment? Well, for that, we have to go to uh, the word weight. What do we mean by weight? Okay, let's find out. Uh, this is the official version, by the way. Okay, here we go. Uh, wait, you look it up. This is from the Wikipedia. Weight, the force acting on the object due to gravity. Okay, and then you have the uh, simple equation. Weight equal mass times gravity. In this case, the gravity on Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, that's the gra that's the acceleration of gravity. Okay, uh, represented by the letter G, little letter G. Okay, but then we find out that there are a little bit of some problems here. Okay, and it's got to do with the definition. That's the official definition. Now we go to all the fine print. <laughs> okay, some standard textbooks define weight as a vector quantity, the gravitational force acting on the object. Others define weight as a scalar quantity, the magnitude of the gravitational force. Yet others <laughs> define it as the magnitude of the reaction force exerted on a body by mechanisms that counteract the effects of gravity. Now, how's that? We have at least three notions, three definitions, three descriptions of what weight is. And just in case, it says further complications in elucidating the various concepts of weight have to do with the theory of relativity, according to which gravity is modeled as a consequence of the curvature of space-time. Guess who came up with that one? <laughs> the current situation is that a multiple set of concepts coexist. So we start off on the wrong foot because we already have all these, at least four definitions, there are four notions of what weight is, 
And the mathematicians don't care. They, you know, they, they use this stuff. They don't care about the qualitative stuff. So they could care less. They can live with this stuff. Okay. Uh, anyways, you see it. Uh, it says weight equal mass times the acceleration of gravity, that little g there. Where did they get this? Let's find out. Okay, here we have it. Give me a second here. Okay, they get it from force equals mass times acceleration, Newton's second law okay, of motion, which is uh, a push um, mechanism. And if you turn that around, you know, you play around with that, you get mass equals force divided by acceleration. Okay, now this isn't a, a math course. Here I'm trying to just get the notion, the qualitative notions out of this. Okay, we're not going to be doing numbers or anything like that here. Okay, so you can see acceleration is a dynamic concept. All three of them, all three variables there are dynamic concept. Velocity is a dynamic concept, time is a dynamic concept, and so is acceleration. So they're talking about motion here, okay? And yeah, force had better have motion because force, above all, is directional. Whether you push or pull, the, the donkey has to move one inch at least in one direction or the other. Okay, keep that in mind. Force means you got to move. You can't stay in your same location. That's my point. Okay, so we look at, well, okay, what is that velocity? Well, velocity includes speed. What is speed? We move a little higher there and it says speed is equal to distance divided by time. But what's the problem there? That distance is not distance. Not in mathematics. In physics, yeah. Uh, distance is, is this, the separation. Here we're talking about distance traveled. Again, it's a dynamic concept. So they're talking about displacement of some kind, some motion. But if you want to have velocity, that's not enough to have speed, which is just distance traveled divided by time. You need one key issue, which is direction. You can't do velocity without direction. And that's uh, quite um, in line with the word force, because force is motion in a given direction. So we're okay there, okay? Where's the problem? Well, the problem is weight is location specific. Weight carries no motion. Okay, let me repeat that. You have a given weight only for a given location somewhere in the universe. You change your location, your weight changed. So weight is location specific. There is no motion. But here they're talking about using Newton's second law of motion, which is what? A law of motion, meaning he's going to move from location to the other. So the question is whether they can use this equation, force equals mass times acceleration, to calculate weight. Is this the uh, uh, equation of weight? Well, you, you saw that weight included the uh, uh, gravity on Earth, the little g. Acceleration of gravity, that's that acceleration there. But you need the Earth. You need a second object. So we're not talking about one object moving towards the Earth. We're talking about two objects and we're talking about location. We're not talking about acceleration or motion or anything like that or distance traveled. You're talking about separation. So you can't use this equation. This equation is the wrong equation to use for weight. You can't use it because this is dynamic equation for force. Okay. Uh, and here you see it. Okay. This is perhaps the equation we should be using. We should be using Newton's gravitational equation. Okay? So we should replace that force equals mass times acceleration for weight equals mass times the acceleration of gravity with force equal, at least as a starting point, right? Force equals the gravitational constant g, mass 1, mass 2, divided by distance squared. Now that is a gravitational equation, and that's what weight is. Wasn't it defined as a gravitational phenomenon? Okay? And I'm going to argue further that this is not even an equation of force. It's an equation of tension. Tension is not a force. Force is not a tension. There's only two forms of contact we call force, and that's push and pull. Tension, no one wins the tug of war. Okay, let me illustrate that here. Okay, no one wins the tug of force, uh, the tug of war uh, during tension. And the problem is that, you know, what they've done over the years is define tension as a pull force. That's what everybody thinks it is. So they always pull it un uh, put, uh, put it under the word pull. They think it's a force of pull of some kind because one guy's pulling against the other. That's the way they look at it. It's not because tension uh, is like if you hold a stick made of a single piece because you're frozen in time. There is no motion. You have a single frame in the universal movie, and that's what tension is. That's what weight is, and that's what Newton's equation is because, you know, that, that changes according to distance. What distance? Is it the distance traveled? No, it's the separation between two objects. What two objects? Mass 1, mass 2. That's the, what the equation tells you qualitatively. Okay? 
And uh, here you see the difference between force and tension, okay? These are the definitions. You see force and influence that when can do what? Change. Change the motion of an object. If you change the motion, what you've done is change locations because motion is two or more locations of an object. So when you have motion, you change location. Once you, once you change location, you do have force. Okay? Force can also be described, I like the word that they use, described, intuitively as a push or pull. Push means you change locations. Pull means you change location. Whichever one you use, doesn't matter. You change location. A force has both magnitude and what? Direction. Okay? Weight does not have direction. It really doesn't. It, 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 it is a tension between two objects. There is no motion. You don't know in which direction it's going to move. It's just a static situation. That's a, a, a static predicament. Okay? Tension is what? Well, this is their definition, okay, by the way. The pulling force transmitted actually along an axis, right, in, by the means of a string, a cable, chain, or similar object. Okay? So all I'm saying is uh, they use the word pull because they're thinking that tension is the stretching. You're stretching, stretching, stretching. You're, you're stretching the rubber band, so to speak. And it wouldn't matter if you stretch a string or a rope or whatever. But think of it as something that's being stretched. That's what they think of it. So they think it's changing locations, uh, gazillions of seconds by gazillions of seconds. <laughs> so they think they're stretching something. No, that, that, that's not tension. What tension is, tension is a tight game. Nobody wins the tug of war. Okay? So it's a tight game. No, there is no motion under tension. Uh, tension is a static concept. Okay, so uh, let's move on here. This is the definition of the word mass now. Keep that in mind, okay? We're going to compare mass against weight. We already looked at weight. We're saying weight has no motion whatsoever. What is mass in comparison? Well, you start out by saying in mathematical physics, one may distinguish con conceptually between at least seven different aspects of mass. Seven different notions that they have of mass. There are a number of ways that mass can be what? Measured or operationally defined. What is an operational or functional definition? It's an irrational definition because it's an after the fact definition. You do an experiment, you do an observation, and that is what retroactively was your definition with which you started out your presentation. That's, that's what an operational definition is. And they're talking about measurement. We're not talking about measurement. We don't care how you measure mass. We want to know what mass is. What is the definition of mass? And here you have a couple examples, six of them. Inertial mass, uh, active gravitational mass. What is that? A measure of the strength of an object's gravitational flux. Passive gravitational mass is a measure of the strength of an object's interaction with a, what, gravitational field. Sounds like weight, doesn't it? Energy also has mass according to the principle of mass-energy equivalence. Mr. Einstein, there, uh, you know, uh, E equals mc squared. Curvature of space-time is a relativistic manifestation of the existence of mass. And finally, quantum mass manifests itself as a difference between an object's quantum frequency and its wave number. So, so uh, which one of these should we use? I mean, here we have six notions of mass. They're telling you there's seven notions of mass. I can tell you two off the top of my head. One is relativistic mass, which they use in special relativity. And that goes against what? Inertial mass. So you have inertial mass on the one hand, you have relativistic mass on the other. And what is relativistic mass? Well, it means that if you move faster and faster, almost at the speed of light, you gain mass. And if mass is the quantity of matter, I guess you're gaining atoms as you go faster and faster? Is that what it is? Or are you pressing stronger and stronger, harder and harder against the scale? Sounds like weight. So is there a difference between weight and mass? It looks like there ain't because, you know, here you have this relativistic mass and all you're doing is pushing against something which they say, well, your mass increases. Surely you're not increasing the quantity of matter in your body. What you're doing is pressing down harder because of your speed against the scale. That's what you're doing. So yeah, it uh, looks like they're confusing mass with, um, with weight, okay? And yeah, there is no difference. Unless someone can show me that if you take something to the moon, right? And they say, well, the, the mass stays the same, what changed was the weight. Well, how do you know that if the way you determine mass is not by counting atoms, which would be quantity of matter? No, the way you do it, you put it on a scale of some kind and you weigh it. And you end up with so many kilograms. And how do you measure your weight? Don't you measure it in kilograms also? So uh, I don't know what the difference is. Maybe someone can tell me. Someone can clarify that in, in very precise ways, not a one-liner, because certainly you won't do it with that, okay? 
And here we look at the differences here. It says mass is both a property of a physical body. Uh, what are they referring to? It looks like they're referring to the quantity of matter, right? And a measure of its resistance to acceleration, which sounds a lot like weight when you look at the acceleration of gravity. Okay, so again, we don't see any difference there. And if it's quantity of matter, what do we do? We, we count little uh, atoms of uh, how much the table is made, uh, a gazillion atoms. Is that how we do it? Or do we weigh it? Okay, mass measured in what? Kilograms refers to an intrinsic property of an object. I thought we weighed weight, our weights also in kilograms. I mean, when they ask me, I don't tell them in what it says next. Their weight measured in what? Newtons measures an object's resistance. Well, I don't know. I don't weigh my, I don't give my weight in newtons. I never have. I always give it in kilograms, which is what? Mass. And if you weigh the mass, then all you're doing is, uh, you're not telling me how much matter it has. You're insinuating that, but you're not, you, you haven't counted atoms. I mean, if mass is the quantity of matters, you would say, well, Bill weighs one gazillion atoms, then, uh, or has a mass of one gazillion atoms. That, then we would understand it, because that would be quantity of matter. But if you say one kilogram or 10 kilograms, 100 kilograms, now you're not talking about, you know, anymore about uh, counting atoms, quantity of matter. Now you're, you're giving your, your value in a measurement instead of in counting. Counting and measuring are two different things. Counting, you count apples. Measure, you measure a table. Those are not two, not the, not identical ways of determining something. Okay. So again, you know, they determine mass through weight, and then they say, but they're different. Why are they different? Because on the moon, you weigh differently. Well, how do you know if, uh, or, or your your weight is different, but your mass is the same? Well, how do you know the mass is the same if you're going to determine mass through weight by weight by putting it on a scale? So this is the issue. It's it's a circular argument because they have never been able since the days of Newton, to determine the difference between mass and weight. They define it differently, they give you the runaround, but they cannot put their finger on it. They can't show you what the difference is. And the reason, again, is that they don't count quantity of matter, ever. They never have and they never will, because nobody's going to take the trouble counting every atom in the Le Grand Kilo, for example, okay, which is the original standard that we had for the kilogram. Okay, I just want to confirm that, yes, mass is the quantity of matter. Here is evidence, proof, what people want out there. Okay, here you have it. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter in a substance or an object. Flexbooks. Mass as quantity of matter, a uh, uh, the paper in publication med. Confused? You bet. <laughs> Mass is the quantity of matter in a body regardless of its volume or of any forces acting on it. The term should not be confused with what? With weight, which is the measure of the force of gravity acting on a body. How it works uh, daily. Wherever you go, I mean, you don't have to take these. You go, just Google it. And find out what mass is, and you'll find out that a lot of people, just most of the people out there, think of it as the quantity of matter. What is quantity of matter? You count apples. That's what quantity of matter is. You got 100 apples, that's quantity. If you're going to measure how much they weigh, 100 apples weigh, now you're giving me the weight. And they say, well, it's the mass. So what is weight? Well, mass and weight are the same because what? we're measuring it against the, gravitational, the gravitation of the Earth. They weigh different on the moon? Yeah, they weigh different on the moon. Did you count how many apples you had? I mean, yeah, you can say, well, those same apples, I, got, I still have 100 apples, but they weigh different on the moon. Yeah, we do that with apples. Now do that with, uh, I don't know, the Grand Kilo, do it with a human body, do it with an astronaut. Then we'll know that you, you get, you're on the right track. Okay, here's the summary of the conclusions. No definitions of mass or weight. In fact, what did I show? Four definitions of weight, seven definitions of mass. So what, we, we take our pick, we, we get to pick which one we want. Is that what it is? Uh, so, other than that, mass is equal to weight because they have never been able to isolate mass from weight. By the way, I, uh, I think it was uh, Newton who created, or the first guy who separated mass from weight in his uh, Principia. I don't know if there was a previous precedent, okay? but he's the guy who, I think, separated them. But again, you know, it's just a mathematical uh, trickery, just a maneuver. Yeah, you go in there and you say mass is this, weight is that, and this is how we determine this and how we determine that. That's all it is, just a bunch of definitions. But uh, they, can't, they can't make them count because, again, uh, we don't count mass. We don't count the number of apples. Tension is not a force. Why? Because it doesn't meet the definition of the word force. Force is motion. Tension is no motion. Think of it as a rod made of a single piece separating two objects. You take a snapshot of that. That's tension. Tension means no one wins the tug of war. You have a single frame of the universal movie, cross-section of time, if you will. And what you have is, think of it as a single piece. Okay, so you have two objects, like a dumbbell. 
Okay, and dumbbell made of a single piece. That's it. That's tension. Tension, there is no motion in either way, supposedly because they're under tension. You know, in tension, they think, well, they're pulling. Okay, so if you pull something that can stretch no longer, now it's under complete tension, the most tension that you can think of. Now what's, now what's moving? Now nothing's moving. Now the rubber band is stretched to the maximum limit. And so now you have tension, complete tension, 100% tension. There is no motion within that rubber band. So tension, you have to think of it as a single piece rod that separates two objects. Newton's gravitational equation, force equals gra uh, gravitational constant, mass 1, mass 2 divided by distance squared, is about tension and not about force. That's a tension equation. Okay, because weight is location specific at a given distance from, in this case, the Earth. The, the, the astronaut is, uh, I don't know, 100 miles from the Earth. You take a snapshot of that, that's his weight at that location. He moves a millimeter, he has a different weight. Period. We're done. Because that's what the equation says. Not because that's what Bill says. That's the equation tells you that. Newton's gravitational equation, what is it? Pull. Why? Because it's the separation between two objects. It's mass 1 versus mass, mass 2 divided by what? Separation. That distance there is the, sep the qualitative separation between two objects. And Newton's second law, which is the force equals mass times acceleration, that's a force of push. Why? Because you're going to have motion. That's a, not only do you have motion, but you have something else. You have direction. It's moving in a given direction. Force, uh, Newton, in Newton's second law, is a vector. Uh, it, it got magnitude and direction. That's not the case with the gravitational law.